I'm moving to part two now. Dealing with uh, difficult patients can be very challenging, but as a nurse, it is essential to master the heart of uh, patient care. So in this video, I'm going to guide you through handling difficult patients with ease and optimum professionalism. The number two is you need to acknowledge the situation. Okay, acknowledge the situation. Acknowledging it, I, I personally uh, always advise that you verbalize the difficulty because verbalizing the difficulty with the patients and sometimes bring everybody back on the same page. Okay. For example, you might say, we both have different views about how your symptoms should be investigated, which is obviously causing some difficulty here. Okay. Another thing about verbalizing it or acknowledging it is it takes the attention from the two entities, from the two personalities into the situation. So it draws the attention to the situation at hand. So the problem is not me, the problem is not you. So the problem is just that we are having different opinion about your discharge. We are having different uh, views about your medications. We are having different views about your care, about your care plan. So it's okay to acknowledge it and verbalize it to everyone. Both parties uh, make the adjustments. Okay, So we, do, we are no longer attacking the, the, the persons. We are attacking the issues at hand. The next thing is we need to demonstrate empathy. We need to demonstrate empathy. I think this should actually be the first thing. The most important skill a nurse should have or a clinician should have is empathy. Okay. So when you demonstrate empathy, you listen to them, they, they tend to be less aggressive. Patient tends to be more cooperative when they when they have the impression that you are trying to understand them, when they have the impression that you are listening to them. Okay, and you are listening genuinely to their point of view, you are listening genuinely to their perspectives. So you are not listening to judge or listening to respond. Okay, and there could be a de-escalation from that, from that, uh, from that moment. And that leads me to the next one, which is effective communication. Okay, everyone naturally will respond to their level of information. If a patient, for example, they are not, the patient is feeling neglected. Now, okay, uh, I've been here. For the past three hours or the past four hours, nobody is attending to me. Nobody is talking to me. Nobody is doing this. So the next time the patient is seeing you, there is a high chance of the patient becoming confrontational or probably aggressive and be like, I've been here all day. Nobody's, everybody's just walking past me. Whereas the fact might be that you've been walking behind the scene, you might have been making referrals, trying to speak to maybe a specialist to come and see the see the uh, patients probably you've been chasing the lab uh, lab for the blood blood test you've been doing a lot of paperwork so you've been doing things behind the scene that the patient is not aware of so if you don't communicate what you, you are doing with the patients then the patient will naturally feel neglected and one of the uh offshoots of such impression is the aggression that comes out of it. So it's, it's important, whatever you are doing, you carry your patient along, let them know you're working behind the scene. Let them know, okay, this is what you are waiting for, this is what you are expecting, this is what you are chasing, this is what you are doing, this is what you are doing. Okay. So even if at this moment, probably it doesn't involve the, it doesn't, uh, involve the patient, you still need to carry them along. Let them know, okay, we're waiting for this. As soon as we get this, then I will come over and uh, have a chat with you about about it okay so they have that sense of belonging okay so they feel respected so try to explain in simple terms for the patients what you are trying to pass across and it's not out of place if you if you find out okay this patient is finding it hard to understand me you can get a colleague to to intervene and provide for that for that explanation so it's not, it doesn't reduce you to get another person to explain what you've been trying to, the information you've been trying to pass across to the patient to help you pass it across. And that might be the, I mean, the end of the difficult or the challenging, the challenging situation. Okay. So effective communication is, is key. I hope you find that helpful. So share with us in the comment section your experience with difficult patients and any other technique that you find particularly helpful don't forget to give the video a like and share with your colleagues as well if you haven't subscribed please hit the subscribe button 
now and i will see you again in my next video cheers